Hey, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you were able to finish all this with no problem, but just in case you didn't, let's go over the answers. And even if you did, let's go over the answers and see if you got the same answers as me, uh, or maybe you learn a different way to doing it. All right. So, uh, easy part, uh, remember for changing a decimal to percent, I moved the decimal two spots to the right, which is kind of cool the way they set up the the portions web, you're moving to the right if you go from decimal to percent. And the opposite is true. If you had a percent and you wanted to go to the decimal, uh, 20%, the decimal would be in. Remember, there's no decimal. It ends up being at the end of the number to the right. So to, uh, 20, you move it two spots to the left if I'm going to a decimal, which is going to the left. Two spots, you get 0.2. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so same idea here, 0.5, right? I'm going to move it two spots. It's going to be here. I got to fill in that egg carton. So 0.5 is the same as 50%. Now, another way of saying 0.5 is five tenths, right? And again, if you had your eyes closed and I said five tenths, you wouldn't know if I was saying that or that, huh? Right? Uh, as a fraction, you can simplify it because five goes into 10. So five tenths becomes one half. And that's the easiest uh, fraction to draw there is, right? You can even write it in words if you want, because it's not that hard. Half. Okay. 1.75, move it over two spots. It ends up being on the other side of the five. That's 175%. You think, oh, I must have done something wrong. No, whenever your uh, fraction or decimal is more than one, your percent was gonna, is going to be more than 100, right? Because one whole is 100%. So 1.75 is 175%. One and 75 hundredths is another way of saying that. And 25 goes into 75 and 100. This ends up being one and three quarters, which kind of looks like one and three quarters. Three quarters is 75 cents, $1.75, cents, right? Now, one and three quarters is not hard to draw. You color in the whole. I divided it into fourths, right? Fourths and quarters. And now the second one I'm going to draw. I'm going to shade in three of those. Okay, two thousandths on this one. So I'm writing two over a thousand, and two goes into the top one, so it goes into a thousand five hundred. And I'm not going to draw a picture of one five hundredth, right? So instead, I'm going to go ahead and write that in words one five, and then you put a little hyphen there, hundredth. Remember, everything to the right of the decimal ends in THS. <coughs> Same thing with fractions for the most part, I think. Uh, not thirds, so that ends in RD, right? But fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, eighths, right? I think after the, the third, everything ends in THS. So where are we at? We are multiplying fractions is what? Easy. <coughs> Three times five. 15, 4 times 8, 32. Boom, you're done. I'm out of here. See ya. How hard was that, huh? Now I'm going 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 8 is 24. I can simplify this. Okay? And you'll learn later that you can simplify before you start. If you recognize a 3 goes into the top and a 3 goes into the bottom, you could say 3 goes into 3 once and 3 goes into 3 once. And 2 goes into the top once and goes into eight four times so one times one is one and four times one is four and check this out six goes into six once six goes into 21. so you can simplify before you start the key is it has to be going into the top and bottom now why does that work well because really three over eight times two over three Three over eight times two over three. It's three times two on top and eight times three on the bottom. Well, three times two is the same as two times three, right? So what if I flip these two? Then I have two over eight times three over three. Well, three over three is one, right? That's one whole. That's the same as one over one. And two goes to the top one, it's the bottom. So I end up with, okay, anyway. That's something we will show you a little bit slower 
in a little more detail later with you giving you a chance to practice. Let's get back on track. We're going 2 times 7 is 14, and 3 times 8 is 24. Now, both of those are even, right? So 2 goes into 14 7 times, 2 goes into 24 12 times, 7 twelfths. 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 7 is 35. Boom, I'm done. I'm out of here. See ya. All right, 12 35th. So you can read my right. I tried to squeeze us in, didn't I? <clears throat> Paper's cheap. Space it out, right? All right. I owe 5 plus I owe 1. I owe 6. What is the absolute value of negative 6? How far is negative 6 from 0? 6 spots. So it's 6. 2 times 4 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. But this negative is outside, so the absolute value is not going to mess with it. It's still negative. Okay. Now, 3.5 times absolute value of negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8. How far is that from 0? 8 spots. So i got to go 8 times 3.5. Five. Remember, you multiply decimals. Pretend there's no decimal. 8 times 35. It's going to be 24 and 4 is 28. Now I go back and say, wait a minute. That wasn't 35. I had to move the decimal over one spot to the right to pretend it was 35. So I have to go back one spot in my answer. So 28 on that one. Okay. 3 times absolute value of 8. Well, Absolute value of 8 is 8. 3 times 8 is 24. 24. Here we figured out what is the difference between 5 and 6 tenths and the absolute value of 5 and 6 tenths. You end up with 5 and 6 tenths minus 5 and 6 tenths. The difference is there is no difference. Big old donut, right? Zero. I have 6 and I spend 10. Uh, uh oh, I owe somebody 4 bucks. All right, 6 minus 10 is negative 4. But I'm going to say how far is that from 0? Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Okay. All right, what do we got on the back side here? Flip it over. We have these equations. And we simplified this, right? n plus n plus n plus 10. And they said this rope is 25. So n plus n plus n is the same as n times 3. And if I subtract 10 from both sides, then I get n times 3 equals 15. And that makes sense. If this is 10 and the whole thing is 25, then this part here should be 15. 3 n's equal 15. Most of you already figured out it must be 5. But let's do our algebra and say, how do I get rid of a times 3? Get rid of it with the inverse operation or divide by 3. Uh-oh. I had an equation that was a perfect balance. I just divided this side by 3. It's a little light now. It's out of balance unless I divide the other side by 3. Now, times 3 divided by 3, they cancel each other out. All that's left is n equals 15 divided by 3. <clears throat> and what do you want to do when you're done with all these? You want to go double check. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 10. Does that equal 25? It does. <clears throat> or you go back and you plug in, substitute. 5 times 3 plus 10. Does that equal 25? 15 plus 10, 25. Boom, you got it right. All right, same idea on the next one. X plus X plus X plus 10. Or x times 3 plus 10 equals 310. That equation is in perfect balance. I want to get rid of that 10 first. I subtract 10 from both sides, right? Got to do the same thing to the other side. Subtract 10 to this side, and I subtract 10 from this side. And that way I'm making sure I do the same thing to both sides. I end up with x times 3 equals 310 minus 10. 300. Now, I want to get rid of a times 3. How do I do that? The opposite of times 3 is divided by 3. But if I do it to that side, I better do it to this side. Okay? They cancel each other out. Times 3 divided by 3. All that's left is x. And this side, I have 300 divided by 3, which is 100. Some of you figured that out in your head. But go through this process and practice it. 
So it becomes a habit. So when you get to problems you can't do in your head, like this next one, a lot of you won't be able to do that in your head. Uh, you have the habits, right? So J plus J plus 10 uh, equals 13. Let's get rid of that 10 minus 10. I got to do it to the other side. Okay. These are opposites. Opposites attract. They go run away together, right? I have J times 2. It's the same as J plus J equals 13 minus 10, 3. I got to get rid of that times 2 with a divided by 2. But if I do it to that side, better do it to that side. All that's left on this side is J. And on that side, I have 3 divided by 2 is what? 1 and 1 half. Tough one, huh? And 1 and 1 half and 1 and 1 half together, 1.5, 1.5 makes 3, and 3 plus 10, 13. All right. <clears throat> C method, 11 times 5, excuse me, I keep coughing. I sort of have a scratchy throat. 11 times 5 is 55, plus 3 more, 58 elevenths. You want to make sure we got it right? Do the opposite. Divide the bottom into the top. How many times does 11 go into 58? Uh, five times, huh? Because so that's 55. My remainder goes on top. My divisor, what was on the bottom when I started, goes on the bottom. I'm back to 5 and 3 elevenths. Must have done it right. Okay. 4 goes into 49 12 times. I'm going to go ahead and go. I could have done it one step at a time, but I know my 12s because it's like how many inches and 4 feet. I'm good, good at my 12s. So 4 times 12 is 48. My remainder goes on top. What was on the bottom goes on the bottom. You want to double check we got it right? 12 and 1 fourth. Let's use the C method. 4 times 12 is 48 plus 1 more is 49. What does it go over? Well, what was the denominator when I started? Got it right. All right, C method. 20 times 3 plus 1. 60 plus 1. 61 over what? 20th. Okay, I want to double check. This video would be shorter if I didn't double check every answer, huh? My remainder goes on top. What was on the bottom goes on the bottom. Got it right. 100 times 6 is 600. So 100 goes into 603 six times. I have a remainder of 3. My remainder goes on top. Divisor on the bottom. All right, that was what was on the bottom. Same denominator. Want to double check? C method. Six and three hundredths. C method, 100 times six is 600 plus three, 603. What goes on the bottom? What was on the bottom? Boom. How'd you do? Hopefully you did well. If anything is confusing, please give your teacher a cookie. What do I mean by that? You don't have to bake cookies, though you could. Uh, go ask them a question. Asking us teachers questions like giving us cookies. We love it. Bring it. All right. All right. Have a good. We will see you soon.